Gut health. It determines whether you are sick or healthy, fit or obese, happy or moody. We hear gut health everywhere. Influencers, ads, and even on the shelves of supermarkets. But what does it actually mean? In this video, I'll be talking about everything you need to know about gut health so you never have to watch another gut-related video. An interesting statistic is that a huge 94.8% of my wonderful audience is female, ranging from the ages of 18 to 34. This is another interesting statistic. Please help a sister out by subscribing. And if you are like me, you may have thoughts about starting your own family one day and having kids. While being less tired, being happier, and losing weight are important, starting your healthy gut journey by watching this video and learning these things will not only have a positive impact on you, but also on your future child and their gut microbiome. So what is the gut? Your gut is another word for the gastrointestinal tract, aka your digestive tract where food is digested. This includes your stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. And the cool thing is, everyone's gut is unique, just like your fingerprint. The gut microbiota is a community of tiny organisms that live inside of your gut. These tiny organisms, otherwise known as microbes, are not just in our gut but all over our body. Nose, mouth, skin, if you counted all the bacteria, viruses and fungi inside of your gut, you would have more than 100 trillion of these microbes. That's enough to reach the moon. And the interesting thing is, we are born with no microbes. Nature bathes us with microbes upon birth and we develop the microbial community inside us over time. So what does a healthy gut look like? Scientists find that defining a universal healthy gut is difficult because everybody's gut community is made up so differently. But generally, it can be defined as a well-balanced gut, that is, a gut rich in beneficial bacteria, is diverse with different kinds of species, and has less other species that could cause disease. But why does diversity matter? Think of your gut microbiota as a thriving city. Each bacterial strain has a specialized job, teachers, doctors, mechanics, and firefighters. The more diverse your microbial workforce is, the better equipped your body is to handle any challenges that come its way, from digesting tricky foods to fighting off infections. The problem. Our gut diversity is decreasing. Our use of antibiotics, ultra-clean modern lifestyles, and Western diets are changing our internal communities, leaving certain beneficial bacteria close to extinction. What food we eat determines which microbes keep their membership in our gut and how diverse our community is. Microbes that thrive in today's burger and fry environment are becoming a larger population of our gut microbiota, taking resources and space while our beneficial bacteria are starving. This imbalance disrupts gut function and is linked to chronic diseases such as obesity, diabetes, autoimmune disease, and IBD. If those diseases didn't feel relatable, what about more common experiences like bloating, constipation, diarrhea, allergies, or even the fact that you get sick so easily? Luckily, however, our gut microbiota isn't static. The quicker we react to prevent things from getting worse, the better. Which brings me to this video's sponsor, Circle DNA. If your body could speak, what would it want to tell you? Because the things we are unaware of now could shape our future. Most of us are guessing when it comes to health. We try out trends, diets, routines, but our bodies aren't a one size fits all. It's hard to know what's going on in our bodies. And this DNA test from Circle DNA helps cut through the guesswork. Circle DNA focuses on preventative health and provides over 500 genetic insights to help you understand your body before issues start. My results? Super interesting. I found out I'm genetically more sensitive to sweet foods, respond best to boxing workouts, and am more prone to the flu. And even more interesting, it showed a genetic inclination towards musical talent. But what really struck me was that it highlighted my genetic risk for conditions like cancer, diseases, and other common health conditions, which means I can take action now instead of waiting for symptoms later. Diet, fitness, stress, sleep, circle DNA helped me understand how my body might respond to each, which helps me make smarter decisions daily. Now I know lactose might not love me and cruciferous veggies are a must for my gut. It's like having a cheat sheet for long-term health created just for me. How it works is simple. Order your kit, swab your cheek to collect your saliva sample, send it back to the lab, wait anxiously for up to 18 days and get your report delivered through email or via the Circle DNA app. It's that easy. Yes, it's an investment, but it's a once in a lifetime one because the more you understand your unique genetic blueprint, the more power you have to shape your future. Check out the description to use my 40% code Hannah K on circledna.com to finally get to know the real you. Imagine your gut is busy like an international airport. Every single day, thousands of passengers go through, some friendly like nutrients from food and some suspicious like harmful viruses. But here's what makes this airport special. 70% of your body's entire security force, otherwise known as your immune system, is stationed right here. Why? Your gut is uniquely exposed to the outside world and 
every meal or hug with the stranger is like a new flight arriving, potentially carrying dangerous travelers. It's an entryway where pathogens can slip into your bloodstream and travel to other organs. Your gut's immune system isn't just local security, it's a highly trained intelligence network. These immune cells don't just stand guard at these gates, they learn the faces of every passenger and deploy scouts across your body like to your lungs. So if a dangerous visitor or pathogen shows up there, your immune system is ready to get to business. Your gut microbiome is in constant communication with your immune system. It helps distinguish between salmonella and a harmless piece of cake and controls the sensitivity and responsiveness of your entire immune system. But when the communication breaks down between your gut microbes and the immune cells, your defenses go a little crazy. Suddenly, your immune system flags harmless passages as threats, resulting in food allergies and autoimmune reactions. Your immune system isn't malfunctioning, it's following bad instructions from a disrupted microbial network. So what causes this communication to break down? This communication breaks down for many reasons, but I'll focus on one major one, that is when our gut barrier is weakened. The gut barrier is like a firewall. It stops harmful bacteria from entering our bloodstream and organs, whilst allowing essential nutrients to pass through. If the microbes get too close, usually because of a thinned gut barrier, our immune system sets up an alarm. This happens when the unhelpful, pushy bacteria become abundant in our gut, which causes the immune system to be put on heightened alert. If the immune system stays heightened for an extended period of time, it is likely to overreact to threats that are only perceived and not real. So now that we've learned that your gut can indirectly cause autoimmune diseases and allergies, it should come as no surprise to learn that depression, anxiety, and stress are all linked to your gut. Imagine the butterflies you feel on a first date, or that gut-wrenching feeling speaking in front of a crowd, or the desperate urge to go to the bathroom before an exam. These feelings are a direct result of our gut-brain connection. Our gut is often called our second brain because it produces over 20 different hormones. Our gut and our brain is connected with 100 millions of neurons, mainly through the highway of a vagus nerve. Information transfer is a two-way street. However, research found that 90% of the information transferred goes from the gut to the brain, and your gut microbiota influences not only your mood, but your cognition and even your decision-making. Most people with anxiety and depression also have abnormal gut function. On the other hand, people with inflammatory bowel disease have higher rates of anxiety and depression. So there is a clear bi-directional relationship between our gut and our mood. This was clear in a study conducted with mice. When researchers transplanted stool samples from participants with depression to a germ-free mice, that is a mouse with no microbes, the mice showed depressive symptoms. When you're stressed, your body activates its fight or flight system. This changes the movement in our gut, causing you to have diarrhea or even constipation. And when you're under constant stress, your body produces more stress hormones. And that familiar stress hormone, norepinephrine, norepinephrine is very hard to say, that one that raises your heart and makes your palms sweaty, also promotes the growth of pathogenic bacteria, activating certain genes in them to make them more aggressive and therefore increasing their chance of survival in the gut. Conversely, inflammation in the gut produces molecules that affect brain function and memory loss. On the positive side, your gut can improve brain function. Our gut bacteria can create amino acids that are needed to make neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin. So it turns out the saying, listen to your gut feelings or describing things as gut-wrenching is backed with science. Speaking of gut feelings, I was about to give into a double scoop of matcha ice cream until I remembered that that voice in your head asking for a snack may be as a result of your gut microbes manipulating your cravings. There's a theory that the gut bacteria in obese individuals are much more efficient as obtaining energy from food compared to lean individuals. Let's look into a study that showcases this. Scientists took bacteria from the guts of human identical twins, one of whom was obese and had low diversity in their microbes, and one of whom was lean. They then transferred the bacteria into mice with no microbes. Bacteria from the obese twin made the mice become more fat and have metabolic issues, whereas the lean twin bacteria mice were lean and metabolically healthy. On the bright side, when these mice were put into the same cage, they ate each other's feces. That's not the bright part. The lean gut microbes took up space in the obese mice and they did not gain excess weight. But these obese mice needed to be fed a diet high in fruits and veggies and low in fat to maintain this population. On the other hand, these lean mice were resilient to these obese mice microbes in this high veggie and fruit diet as well. And looking in humans, overweight and obese individuals with a more diverse gut microbiota are less likely to have insulin resistance, elevated cholesterol and inflammation compared to overweight and obese individuals with a less diverse gut microbiota. Diversity can also explain why some people develop diabetes and obesity-related diseases without being physically obese, 
aka people who are skinny fat. Some researchers even think microbes can mess with our taste receptors, make us feel rubbish, or even release feel-good chemicals when we eat what they're after. But lucky for us, we have a say in this manipulation. I've compiled six big science-backed tips after watching tons of videos, studying books by renowned gut health experts, and reading a bunch of scientific articles, all to help you take control of your gut health. The next video is a big one, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. I'll see you guys in the next one. God bless you guys. You got this.